Janet Diane Morris Wordlow again with another edition of Healthy Living. I'm so happy that you're here to watch me with my latest creation because this is kind of a fun one. This is zucchini avocado chocolate cake. So you might not want to tell people what's in it until they taste it. That's what I did with my family, but let's get started. Down here I have already cut up an avocado and you can either use a fork to mesh it up or you can use a beater, but I decided just to go with a fork because it's a little bit easier to clean up and less noisy. I'm just going to mash it all together. Now as you know, avocados are wonderful, wonderful fats. So this is really a good healthy base for your cake. Now I wanted to tell you, because some people have an issue with cutting up avocados or they're a little bit afraid of them because of having to cut them, all you have to do is take your knife and go around the middle like that. Once you've done that, you just take your two halves and you turn it and you pull it apart. And it's very easy. Then you take your knife and you can make uh, two or three slits and you just kind of peel that back again. So they're really very easy to do. So don't be afraid of avocados because they're really healthy for you. So we're going to squish all this up together. Well, it's nice and fine, and as I said, you can use beaters and electric mixer if you want. Piece hanging on there. Okay, that looks good to me. All right, so what I have here is I have a quarter of a cup of butter, which is this big of a portion, a half a cube, melted. And then I have one of my, this is a 70%. Now you can use a little bit more if you want. You can go 85, 88%. This will make it just a little bit sweeter. So I'm going to use the 70% in this one. And we're just going to throw that in with the butter so we can get that melted. It won't take too long. And you want to stir it around and keep that on low heat so we can have as less, as little of separation as possible from the chocolate. But I just took it and broke it up into pieces. It goes into the hot butter on a low heat. And then this is going to get mixed in with our friendly avocado over here. These are really good and nutritious, nutritious bars. Sometimes, if I have a little thick whipping cream on hand, I use it for topping, but you don't need anything. Or you can make a ganache, which I have shown you in other podcasts how to do. Put that on the top. Okay, this is nice and smooth, so I'm going to go ahead and put this in with my avocado. fork out of the way. And just push this together. It's nice colors. It's too bad that green doesn't stay, but we've got that healing energy of green in there. Okay, if you have any extra big lumps of avocado, now's the time to get them mushed in so you don't have to reveal your surprise until you're ready what your ingredients are. I also have two teaspoons of aluminum free baking soda along with one teaspoon of high quality sea salt. Remember I like fleur de sel. So that's going in. And I have two eggs. That's going to go in. Okay. 
These are kind of like a, oh, maybe a lighter type of a brownie when they're done. In the meantime, I have my oven preheating on 350. And we will bake these approximately 30 minutes, depending on the heat of your oven. You do not want to make these too dry. Okay, I have also three quarters of a cup of my coconut secret crystals, coconut crystals. And that will be our primary sweetener. There's my oven. Telling me it's ready. Okay, now to make it a little bit more chocolatey, I have three tablespoons of cacao powder. So that's going to go in. half a cup of sour cream. That blends right in. That's some more good fat for you. Now if you want to stay away from dairy you can replace it with a variety of things. You could put in another avocado or two but you might want to be mindful of the flavor. Uh, you could do of course yogurt. That will, that's still dairy of course. Or sheep's yogurt, goat's yogurt, any of those kind of things. You could also replace it with applesauce, but that's going to add to your carb count a little. When these are done, I make about 32 bars, and each one has about 8 to 9 carbs in them. So, very carb-efficient recipe. I'm going to put in 1 teaspoon, approximately, of organic vanilla extract. that in. And I have previously grated approximately two cups of zucchini. Now the reason I say approximately is because I have in here the rest of the zucchini that I've had from other cakes that I've made. If you have a little bit less, it's not going to hurt it. If you have a little bit more, but if you have a, just a piece of a zucchini sitting in your... I'm going to dump some of this water out. You see how much water is in there as it's set. So I'm going to dump that out a little bit. Now this goes in. You don't want to be left with just a little piece of zucchini sitting in your refrigerator unless for sure you're going to eat it because I consider that wasteful and we don't want to do that. Now you can run this through a food processor. I hand did it on a hand grater. But you can grate it any way you want. Approximately two cups, depending on the zucchini. As I said, you can put in a little bit more. You can put in a little bit less. That gets all stirred in. The zucchini always makes everything nice and moist. So I like that about zucchini. And here I've already prepared one cup of the buckwheat flour and one cup of almond meal flour. Now somebody wrote in the other day and said if her family is allergic to tree nuts, what could she replace the almond meal with? You can do everything in the buckwheat if you like. I use the nut flour because it helps to lower the carb count considerably, but buckwheat flour has about 80 carbs per cup. And again, it's food and it's an herb, you want to remember. So I don't consider it a really high carb ingredient as opposed to other flours that are out there. So, there goes the flour. All this off. Make sure everything is mixed, including from the bottom. really nice batter and the last ingredient to go in is another one of my dark chocolate bars which I 
just put on my cutting board and cut it up into my, my idea of what chocolate chips are. So that's going in. You could also add chopped nuts in here if you like nuts. You could add cinnamon if you like that flavor. Personally, I'm not really too fond of chocolate and cinnamon, but some people like that. So you could put a little bit of cinnamon there if you like, if you want it a little bit sweeter. You could add about a half a teaspoon of stevia in it. So again, you kind of have to find out what your tastes are. It's all going into my pan here, 9 by 12. Again, my oven is preheated to 350 degrees, and I will be baking it for approximately 30 minutes. I will be checking it because I don't want it to dry out. I like my cakes a little on the moister side rather than the drier side. So, you want to remember to spread it, your cakes out evenly so that they bake evenly. This is even something you could use as a breakfast food because you want to remember that overall it's food. And even though it does have some coconut sugar in it, remember your body does need sugar, which of course it gets from carbohydrates anyway. So, let me use my finger because I want to get all the batter off. And a little paper towel because this is going to burn up on the side and it's going to be harder to clean later, which of course I do not want. I want an easy cleanup. So I'm just going to pop this in the oven and then set my timer for about 25 minutes and come back and check it. And we'll see how it's doing. All right, let's take a, a look. It's been about 35 minutes. I checked it a couple times before and it didn't pass the toothpick test. So let's see. Okay, it's a little bit, but I like it that way. I don't want it totally dry, so I'm good with it. That's going to come out. Close this up. Now, <clears throat> remember I told you <clears throat> that you, we can make 32 bars, so I want to show you how to cut it so it's very easy for you. You just find the middle of your pan. It's better to do this when your, pan, when your cake is a little cool. Mine's very, very hot because it won't make as many crumbs, but I'm going to go ahead and do it anyway so I can show you to make it easy for you. After it sits and cools, it will, you can see it's a little jiggly because it's so hot, but it will all come together after it cools. So we cut it in force that way, and then I go down the center as best as you can find the center. Okay, and then you're going to go down again. Now if you want to leave your cake like this, you're going to have about 16 pieces and they're going to be worth about 18 carbs a piece. So you can do that as well. I always cut mine a little smaller. So I'm going to go one more time across this way and I make them more into like brownie portions. And this is going to give me 32 and each one is going to be worth somewhere close to 9 carbs. And I know it's hot, but I'm going to take a square out so you can see how nice it looks inside. It may be a little crumbly, but we'll deal with it. Let's see what we can do. I want you to see how nice it looks. So you can see the steam is very hot, but it's nice and moist. You know, it's not green, and it has a little bit of your chocolate pieces in there still. So it's a very delicious cake, and as I said, you can even eat something like this for breakfast if you're not a big breakfast eater or it's a, a really wonderful late nighttime snack. You can put it in your sandwich bags, put it in the freezer if you're one person, and take it out as you need it. But the time to freeze it is after it's cool. So you don't want to wait until you know, a few days down the road and decide, oh, I'm not going to eat it all, because that's when it's going to be getting a little stale and dried out. So as soon as it's cooled, then I'll be putting it in baggies and putting it in your freezer. So then when you take it out, it will be almost like fresh. Stuart likes to eat it with a little bit of jam on top. I don't particularly care for it that way, but you might. 
good bit berries. Again, I often serve it with whipped cream, but it is one of our family favorites. So with that said, I hope you enjoy. Let me know your cooking results. And I thank you for Janet Diane Moria Swordlow, healthyliving for expansions.com. Bye bye. <music>